I Love Black People Radio on HUR Voices, Sirius XM, Channel 141. I Love Black People is more than a radio show. I Love Black People is a call from our ancestors to protect us from racial profiling all across the world. Go to iloveblackpeople.com and become a member today. Membership empowers you to live fearlessly and protect black people globally from racism and xenophobia. Join us today and become a member of our global network with an online global green book with black-owned and black-friendly businesses to protect you and your community. Membership is free, and with you, we will become 10 million strong worldwide. I am, because we are. And welcome to another edition of I Love Black People, and I'm just so thankful for all you who have uh, stayed with us on this journey and throughout the years and just been very supportive. And want to give a shout out, particularly those who've actually taken the time out to participate in some of our, our recent events. We had a Black Blockchain Summit, as well as uh, with our website, iloveblackpeople.com. I uh, just want to thank all those who've joined, who participate. Uh, we have like the, the Saturday uh, morning call that's uh, done every every week. Uh, on Pan-Africanism, so much of what we're doing is to elevate our global communities. And it's important that the participation be, be you know, recognized as well as we're grateful for all those participating in those activities. Uh, also, just want to give a shout out. It's that time of the year again. It's homecoming season. I, I attended uh, Tuskegee and Howard Universities. So very, uh, you know, anxious and anticipating a return, uh, especially, you know, enduring this, this COVID, you know, we, those of us, you know, who made it, you know, we made it through and, you know, we've made it through, we've probably, you know, different folks have been sick themselves and made it through some rough, you know, patches there, as well as, uh, you know, many of us have lost loved ones. I know I have uh, during this whole episode. So it's important that we're grateful and, uh, you know, if you can, you know, make it out to your homecomings. I know sometimes we, we're so busy with our ambitions and our work and our jobs that, you know, we can't, you know, because of family or financial reasons. But I, I think the therapy, uh, I think if it, I'm thankful for our ancestors for even having homecomings or creating homecomings so we didn't have to make them. So at least we could actually attend. So I definitely... Um, am going to do my best to be as more active. Uh, I'm guilty of not uh, always uh, making time for those those things that are important uh, community wise. All those folks who knew us back when, you know, we didn't have no credit hours or didn't have any degrees. So again, shout out to all the homecomings and, you know, just, you know, even if you don't attend, reaching out to friends, seeing what's going on with homecoming and after homecoming is over, you know, giving shout out and, and try to catch up with folks and see, get a, get a report, but whatever you do, you know, try to get reconnected. I think those are the things that have been very therapeutic because you never know what people are going through. And, you know, I, sometimes we don't even talk about it. You've heard it recently in a lot of the, the media talking about uh, uh, mental health and depression and things that, we all go through and it's it's that call, that one little call that can make a difference. So I'm even trying my best to, you know, with all the business calls, throw some calls in there to have nothing to do with business. Just checking in on folks who I haven't spoken to in years or don't speak to normally because our lives have kind of gone in different directions. You never know. Just that message, you know, leave a message and just, you know, words of encouragement, inspirations, you know, and you, you know how you talk to your friends. So I think it's important sometimes that as we get super busy, homecoming is a, a great reminder as a community about how we can kind of connect together and, and, and actually uh, be a therapy, be therapists to each other uh, in our community, you know, communion and uh, uh, interacting with each other. So I think that's super important as we move up on that. And I think we're going to be doing some things with uh, I Love Black People uh, throughout this time. We we have a, a bus, an RV in Washington, D.C. So we're still trying to make plans to have that more mobilized. Now, the weather is changing. 
So it was getting a little cold. So having a bus that, you know, when people are not necessarily out and about might not be as, as fruitful. But if anyone has any ideas or interest in, in participating in any activities with the uh, I Love Black People bus, uh, please let us know at uh, info at I Love Black People. And we'll definitely uh, engage and participate in some of the activities. We really think it'd be a good thing for some of these small businesses that are reopening to draw attention to their, you know, you know, that's it, the brick and mortar space is very difficult. You know, I had a, uh, uh, four dry cleaners uh, for a number of years, uh, I think over five years, past the five-year mark. And I, I tell you what, it's a very difficult thing to do. And especially in this climate, you never know if there's going to be another outbreak of a severe pandemic. Some of these small businesses, you know, I, I tip my hat because it, opening your doors every day and, and praying that people show up is a tough, it's tough. So, you know, all the shout outs to all the Ma Pa, all the small, no one wants to stay small. So when we say small businesses, you know, I know it. no one wants to be small. Everybody wants to be a big business. But um, shout out to all those business people who do it every day, you know, making payroll. I remember it was so bad. I had to change uh, payroll from Friday to, uh, to, to, to Monday just so I can make some money over the weekend. So the struggle is real. And, you know, as, as much as we're doing, we can leverage the bus to help out with uh, driving traffic to folks' as, uh, businesses uh, in the DMV. And you, we, we've used the bus before for like tours, literally from all the way down south to the Midwest uh, for, we used it for a super pack uh, we started called I Love, I mean, the 1911 United. We actually had the uh, uh, Kappas and the Qs, the Qs and the Kappas came together under a super pack. It was the first black super pack. Uh, Citizens United, I know it's a little touchy subject, uh, but the fact that we, we used the vehicle of a super pack was based on the fact that we wanted to contribute to the re-election of, of Barack Obama. And you can't uh, contribute to campaigns uh, unless you do it directly. And then when you do that, you don't have any control of the money and there's limits to even that. So when we uh, devised the 1911 United and used the super PAC model for it, we were able to, to give as unlimited amounts. And it, that's not just cash, because I think the super PAC only ra it raised a little less than 300,000. But the amount of in-kind services, that means time, uh, expertise that was donated to support uh, Barack Obama was incredible. And, you know, we can debate about uh, Obama's record as it relates to the black community, but let's be very clear. In those days, we were we knew that we would remember if Barack was a one-term president. Like, that was unacceptable. We were not going to have the first black president be a one-termer. So, you know, we, we, I think one of the things we said, we don't know how much money or or how much time we spent, but we may not remember that, but we sure remember if he was just a one-term president. And uh, if those, you know, sometimes time will kind of make people kind of forget where we were going through, but uh, there was still some very serious unemployment issues. The economy still was a bit sluggish after the, the Bush years of destroying the, the economy. So uh, people were not certain if he could win. And so, you know, again, I know he won. So people look back and say that it was, uh, you know, maybe it was inevitable. But at the time, you know, there was a lot of skepticism if, if he could actually pull it off. So we definitely we used the bus for that. And then after he was reelected, we also used that same bus to support some of his work uh, when, you know, some of the issues he was dealing with uh, domestically was gun violence. So we had a. Uh, tour with the with the bus called Love and Protect Your Children, where we actually went to different communities, especially in the battleground states, and identified gun violence organizations that were already on the ground doing work and actually elevating their activity, getting people to sign up to support them, uh, attending activities with them, working together with them. And we did those tours. And then we st stayed in Chicago for part of it 
the longest. Uh, we worked with a, uh, a, a group called, I think it was Ceasefire. And this was a ceasefire in Chicago. And we were dealing with, you know, shooters, you know, like young folks who actually had, you know, shoot, shot and killed people. And we took uh, one young brother who had been involved in some shooting incidents and we actually took him on the tour with us after Chicago. We actually went down to Mississippi and did a civil rights tour. And we hired a young brother. He had been involved in some violent activities I forget the young brother's name, about 16 years old. And we made him our official photographer for the uh, remaining part of the tool. So he was make, taking pictures and we actually had a booth. I think we had a booth where we were participating at the uh, Essence Festival. So this, this had to be like 2012, 13. And uh, really, you know, tried in our best ways to be the solution for our own community. And this is, again, was done with members of Omega Psi Phi fraternity, as well as uh, Kappa Alpha Psi fraternity. And we always tried to say it that way. Like, since I'm a Kappa, we'd always say the Q's first. I would always say the Q's first. And my partner, got a brother named Chase Sales, who was an Alpha chapter uh, uh, Omega, Omega, he would always say the Kappa's first, just so we never got into any weird, you know, folks trying to think that we were doing something uh to elevate one over the other. But what's so crazy about when you do stuff with these fraternities, uh, most of the black community don't even know what a Kappa Alpha Psi is. Like if you don't um, deal with Greek letters, like most people have no reason to, to ever look at a Psi. You know, it looks like a candelabra or a pitchfork. And literally when you, you know, I think so, so many of us make so much of these organizations, which are great. Anytime we organize, organizing is great. I mean, I don't call myself Greek. I'm a, I'm a black man. I'm an African. But, but all that being said, most of the people don't even know what a a, a noop is. So, uh, we 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 tried to make sure we focus not on the fact that we were in fraternities, but we tried to do our best to focus on us as brothers, uh, and and so many sisters helped. Them. Let me just be even very candid with our organizing uh through uh members of the because we couldn't officially be a part because these uh fraternities are non you know uh partisan we couldn't be affiliated so we literally uh you know 1911 united is a year both of these organizations were founded so literally what we did was just have folks who were members participate not the actual Actually, we got letters from each organization saying don't don't do anything. It was so bad the Kappas told us that we couldn't even use 1911, like the whole year. The Omegas was a little bit more reasonable. You know, they said, as long as you don't use our name, you know, we want Obama, you know, but they didn't say that, but they said, you know, as long as you don't use our name, we're you know, there's nothing for us to, there's nothing here. So uh, in our legal teams, were, you know, had made sure we crossed the T's and dotted the I's. So we, we had a very Sandler and Reef uh, was our law firm, very big law firm uh, at the time. So politically. So we, we didn't have any issues with that. But, mo uh, uh, you know, most of, if not much of our support came from black women. So just as much we, we led it as black uh, fraternal members of these organizations, it still was the sisters who stepped up and made sure that everything we did with these tours and the, with the bus was super awesome. So we just were so thankful. And like I said, with the last one in uh, with the young brother who was a photographer from Chicago, we did the um, Essence Fest, which was really nice. And if you haven't been to Essence Festival, you know, you, you're missing something. I think that's a, a go to. There's nothing like it in the world. That's the fest in New Orleans. They just had it back this year, and it was it was great. You know, it, it's again a lot of these events and activities are just getting back together. So a lot of the work that people are doing are just to make people aware: hey, we're back, we're black, and we're ready to go. So you know, I definitely can't miss an opportunity to be with our people and doing that. I think other, a couple of other things that have been. Super important. Uh, we've been doing things in, in the nation's capital. I just want to give a shout out to Mayor Muriel Bowser. She's uh, somebody that I've known for years. Uh, literally, uh, I worked on a campaign uh, 
I ran the uh, field campaign for brother Adrian Fenty. He was uh, mayor and I had just left being an advisory neighborhood commissioner and uh, was finishing up my dry cleaners, which was again, talking about small business had come to an end and she was my ward four coordinator and super amazing sister. And to see her uh, prosper, you know, be prosperous for her, her, her hometown is, is super amazing. And I think one of the things we don't oftentimes give people their flowers because it's politics. So politicians are all tr- problematic, but to be able to say, you know, Hey, this sister, you know, born and raised in the particular capital city, you know, dealing with misogyny and sexism and racism to be able to get to the point where she's now going, you know, very possibly after this general election, going to her third term uh, is, is amazing. And she even a- adopted a daughter while she was in office. So, you know, just just to let you know, you know, how this sister thinks about family. She even, you know, Sister Miranda, just, just you know, understanding how, you know, I've even called her mother, Sister Mother Mayor, you know, because she really does care about our, our people in our community. And... I think it is difficult, again, when you're dealing with politics, the motivations, the issues that are faced. Uh, but at the same time, she's done such an amazing job. And, you know, just uh, I've spent some more time in the D.C. Uh, area. You, as many of you know, I travel a lot. I've been over 60 countries. So I do business throughout Africa. I have staff. I love black people is literally throughout the continent of Africa. We got staff in like Wanda, Kenya. South Africa, Zimbabwe. Uh, we've had some folks in Ethiopia. Uh, so we really are Pan-African globally. And being back in D.C., I, the Congressional Black Caucus was here uh, just recently. And it doesn't do a lot oftentimes more than socializing. We need to do better with that. But uh, I definitely was super pleased with... Uh, how the mayor is, is, is progressed and main, you know, and, and there's still obstacles, you know, the issues that we still face, you know, it's almost like liberation. Liberation is not a destination. Uh, we have to stay vigilant. It's a, it's a, a journey. So definitely a shout out to, to, to the mayor and wish her well on her reelection and uh, all her staff. That's a, another thing that doesn't get highlighted. You, this, you, Washington DC is a capital city city and we're going to be doing more to focus in on on black leadership like that because the mechanics of it is hard we can have great rhetorical conversations or debates about the issues but the actual organizing of the resources and people to actually execute these things can be it's, it's not a you know it can be daunting it's, 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 it requires you know real effort with real people taking, you know, responsibility for their actions. So I definitely want to make sure we expose more of that behind the scenes of how, you know, the, the sausage is made. I'm not trying to push people to eat meat, but how do we make, how does, you know, how are these large, you know, entities ran and give us an understanding of what it takes to either support uh, work like that or even lead ourselves. I know we oftentimes talk about leadership, but we don't often talk about followership. You know, on, on the social media stuff, there's always talk about uh, followers, how many followers you have. But, you know, people like uh, Kwame Nkrumah were, uh, were ousted with coups from his followers. So as much as we, we love him and many of these other brothers and sisters, many times the followers end up not being there for them to support even through di- difficult times. So again, I think there's an amount of c- accountability that we must hold leadership to, uh, especially in this election season. But that accountability should start with us as followers, start with us holding ourselves accountable to an agenda. And then we hold the, those around us and then we hold those politicians accountable, win or lose. I, if whoever you're, you you vote for, if you participate, you know, some people don't participate in this in, in electoral politics, whoever wins is supposed to be representing you. So even if you didn't vote, they represent you. So it's literally about holding people accountable and not just paying your taxes. Because I, I do hear people talk about how they're not going to vote or 
they're not going to do the lesser two evils. I don't believe in that either. No lesser two evils, but I do vote. I'll be very clear that this system doesn't care if you vote or not. If you don't vote, it just makes the people who's vote, who votes, their votes even more powerful. It, their vote is going to represent all the folks. It's not going to vote re, re, just represent them. Even the people who don't participate, that election is going to impact all of them. So the thing I tell people, if you really are upset with the system and you don't want it to work, just follow the money. And in this system, if you don't pay your taxes, you can go to jail. There's no going to jail for not voting. So if you're not clear which one is more critical in this system, uh, then just follow the money. You know, try to go without paying your taxes. Go around, you know, just as I hear people bragging about not voting. Brag about not paying your taxes. See how that goes. Tell everybody that you're not going to pay your taxes or haven't been paying your taxes and see if that works out. But that's, again, starving this machine is probably... The, the, if you're really serious about protests or serious about, you know, making a change to the system, uh, starving it for of money probably would have the more uh, lasting impact than trying to say, I'm going to keep my vote away from folks who don't want us to vote anyway. So I didn't want to get all into that. But I think in this election season, those are some of the to recap uh, things that we that are going on that I think we should be more thoughtful about as we kind of interact with each other and talk about what we want to, what we want to see happen in the society or what we don't. Um, again, with I love black people, we, you know, our, our premise is, you know, leveraging our, all of our networks, all of our relationship to build a safety net to protect each other from racial profiling and xenophobia. And we don't need to wait on elections to do that. There's so much that we can do with each other and so much that's being done that's not highlighted. And I think, again, with this show, you know, our attempt is to, to highlight that, that the, the black people and the things that people do uh, as it relates to black folks. You know, again, there's, there's folks who aren't black who are doing things that impact our lives in, in a positive way. We need to know about those things just as much as we need to know about the things they're doing to hurt us. So this this show is to, to really focus on the positive things that are being done, but oftentimes aren't elevated, aren't analyzed, or we don't get the background on. So it's important as we, we go through this journey, just again, do our own organizing, you know, win or lose during these elections. These elections last a day, but there's still 364 days that we have to live and, 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 and thrive as people. So again, you know, I love black people.com. Make sure you guys, uh, you know, check that out if you haven't done it, because the ones that have, we definitely, like I said in the beginning, we appreciate it. Uh, another thing that we're going to be doing, uh, we have a, a global green book, and this will be our fourth edition. So, and we focus on themes and our theme uh, again, this year will be healthcare. And we're going to be focusing on with the pandemic and the COVID, a lot of people have made, you know, you know, arguments. Is this man-made? Is, is this natural? Or all these issues. And no matter if it's natural or man-made, it's literally toxic. And we need to do something in a toxic society. And then with all the mandates that require people to take vaccines and things that many, many people do not want to take, we're... We, all those things we get, but that doesn't mean that we we don't need to be vigilant with the sicknesses that are out here and how do we empower ourselves. So with this, this year's uh, Global uh, Green Book, we're looking at how do we help with some of the side effects that might be occurring or how do we uh, treat, uh, you know, in a therapeutic way, detoxing our bodies from all these chemicals and things that we're putting into it to, to make things better. And we want to make sure we're very clear that there are things that we can do that are uses natural methods with, with proven, when I say proven, things that won't hurt you, but there's things that we can do proactively. And so besides having uh, information about healthcare providers, that are black friendly and black owned, we're gonna have real conversation and kind of analysis and suggestions and solutions about ways to 
uh, detox our bodies uh, from all of this COVID, uh, be it side effects or actually after effects if you had COVID. So these are things that are important that we want to make sure we capture in this year's uh, Global Green Book. In the previous book, we, we talked about many things going on throughout the world. Uh, we had monuments just for fun. We had like African monuments uh, for liberate that celebrate the liberation struggle. We're not going to have that this year. This year, it looks like we're going to focus on HBCUs and as well as African universities. Uh, it's definitely important that we show and, and share uh, our academic and, and educational achievements. But with that being said, and just kind of wrapping it all up, as we always do, I am because we are, and we're so thankful, like we started, for all of your support and everything that you guys do, you, you all do to support us with I Love Black People. So again, thank you so much. And take this is I Love Black People Radio on HUR Voices, Sirius XM, Channel 141. I Love Black People is more than a radio show. I Love Black People is a call from our ancestors to protect us from racial profiling all across the world. Go to iloveblackpeople.com and become a member today. Membership empowers you to live fearlessly and protect black people globally from racism and xenophobia. Join us today and become a member of our global network with an online global green book with black-owned and black-friendly businesses to protect you and your community. Membership is free, and with you, we will become 10 million strong worldwide. I am because we are.